So Maurice, how did the Mayans know so much about the sun? I mean, we think you were just saying that you were told you couldn't learn that much about it. How did they know so much? That's a very good question, Kate. So in 1989, I went down to their ceremonial center in Palenque in Mexico to take a look at what they left behind, their treasures. And I was absolutely amazed. Once I got into the archaeology of the Maya, into their, uh, the, their jewelry, their carvings, uh, their art, their paintings, it became clear that they'd left messages behind that, to me, could only be described as living miracles. I then started to investigate them in great detail to figure out how they could have calculated the sunspot cycle, which had taken me three years to do with the largest computer in the UK. And it seemed that they got all of their knowledge from their priest king leader, Lord Pei Cao. Now, it's interesting that Pei Cao is very similar etymologically to Pascal. And Pascal in Ireland is, uh, refers to Easter because it's, it derives from the word Passover. Uh, when Jesus was crucified. And when we investigate the treasures left behind by the Maya, I call them Maya transformers because they change into different pictures when you're looking at them. They're almost like living videos. Lord Pei Kao tells us that he was the reincarnation of Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, Tutankhamun, and he also tells us that he was to come again in Peru later as the uh, white gods known as the Viracochas. And how long ago did he live? Lord Paykal uh, lived in Palenque in Mexico around 710 A.D. Okay. That's when the Maya civilization was at its peak. He also realized the effects of the sun on the earth. It, because of this cyclic behavior of the sun, he understood that the Maya would die out because of lack of fertility hormones. He knew that when we had a sunspot minimum, then we had a mini ice age. So temperatures would fall, we'd have crop failure and drought. He also knew that at that time, when the sun is extremely active, it gives off uh, more particles. And when it's less active, it gives off less particles. And these particles block the x-rays from the sun. What that means is during a sunspot minimum, we have more x-rays which bombard the equatorial regions. That affects the pineal gland in females and females have more miscarriages and spontaneous fetal abortion. And Maurice, aren't we experiencing that now? Uh, we, we are experiencing infertility right now, uh, but it's not due to the sunspot cycle. That's okay. due, to, we, we believe, due to uh, environmental factors like oestrogen from the uh, contraceptive pill being in drinking water, causing pollution. Mm. Uh, but it, it's not quite the same reason. Could now, could the sun, you talk about these cycles, is there a time when the sun could, could stop flaring or whatever it is, it's at such a minimum that it would be so cool that we could not survive, you said a mini ice age, but it could get worse than that? Oh, it gets much worse than that. Uh, I've just been, uh, I've just written a paper on global warming and it's on my website. It's called The Cause of Global Warming and Global Cooling. And it's amazing to imagine that uh, some scientists have tried to explain the cause of global warming in isolation of a mechanism that explains away global cooling. Yet, unbelievably, that's what's happened over the mm -hmm. uh, closing uh, years of the 20th century. Now, we know, uh, the interesting thing is, in 1950, the scientist Velikovsky maintained that ice ages couldn't happen, and yet we know they do happen. He said they can't happen because when temperatures get colder, we get less evaporation of water, less snow, less ice, so glaciers can't grow because they're made of fresh water, they're made of snow and ice. And he says when temperatures rise, all the glaciers can do is melt. So because of that, he says, if you think about it logically, we can't have ice ages. <laughs> but he knew we had ice ages, so he said, well, how could they be caused? He reckoned the Earth must be heating up from inside, not outside. Yeah. And this is what I've just been uh, finished work on on my paper on global warming. And what it shows is that the sun's magnetic field, as it changes over this 18,000-year cycle, uh, changes direction from northeast to southeast. As it does that, it, it, it induces energy into the Earth, pulses of energy. The magma inside the Earth heats up, and as the magma heats up, the oceans boil from below. So what happens is the, the steam condenses during cooler periods, causing uh, an ice age to set in and glaciers to grow. So the mechanism is complex, but we can take it all the way back to the sun. One thing's for sure, it's got very little to do with CO2 on the Earth.
Yeah. Maurice, okay, our time is running out here, but I want to get back to the Mayan people. We, we have determined that they were uh, exceptionally intelligent with, uh, with regard to the sun and, and, uh, and, and planets and universe. So what are they saying about 2012? Well, uh, in all fairness, Richard, uh, what happened was in 1995, I took the Mayan prophecies to a publisher called Element in the UK. Now, unfortunately, it went uh, a bit off track. They tried to make out to the public that the world was going to end in 2012 because the Maya calendar ends in 2012. That was a ploy to sell more books. Yeah. The book was a very uh, big seller worldwide. And unfortunately, it propounded the, uh, the idea that the Maya calendar ended in 2012. The Maya calendar does not end in 2012. In 2012, it's the end of a 13th period of 144,000 days. Now, nothing happened at the end of the 12th period of 144,000 days. Nothing happened at the 11th or the mm -hmm. 10th or the 9th. Nothing at all. I found no connection between the Maya understanding of the sun or any astronomical event in 2012. The best I could suggest was that the end of the 13th cycle might have something to do with the, the precession cycle. But then within two years of my book being produced, five books appeared on the market, all making claims about 2012 and the precession cycle. So if we don't have to worry about it. I have an idea what's going to happen on December 31st, 2012. <laughs> at the stroke of midnight, it's going to become 2013. <laughs> That's right. Maurice, Ma Maurice we, uh, need to say, we need to wrap it up oh, here and say goodnight. I'm very sorry. This is way sorry. too short. We will get you back on soon. Thanks so much, Maurice. You're